Hello everyone and welcome to the materials and resources category for this Lead Green Associate exam tutorial. One of the first things you'll notice if you're into sustainability is that this kind of looks like a life cycle. If this was extraction and at the end here on the right we have disposal. And you may notice this is an open system, it's a cradle to grave system and it, that's not very sustainable as we know. So as we're going to talk about in this section, we want to go for a cradle-to-cradle -cradle mentality and a closed loop system. So not this line over here, but more of a circle. This category takes a life cycle approach to materials. It considers a project's entire life cycle from extraction of materials to eventually disposal. We use product declarations in order to disclose environmental and human health hazards and information. And this is to help projects make the best material choices possible. So disclosure is really one of the most important things in this category. And for that reason, we want to use products that have that life cycle inform information available with sustainable properties as well. We want to minimize health impacts and costs from extraction, production, transportation, consumption, and eventually disposal. So the main themes here are disclosure and optimization. Disclosing means revealing and analyzing product info so that optimization can occur. You can't really have that optimization if you don't have the information available, so that makes sense. Now, optimi optimizing refers to improving products and materials to meet our performance goals. As we head to the checklist here, we have a prereq of storing and collecting recyclables, as well as for managing construction and demolition waste. Now, for the actual credits, we have building life cycle reductions, uh, building product disclosures and optimization, product disclosures and optimization for raw materials, and the same thing for material ingredients, as well as construction and demolition waste management. So that goes along with establishing our baseline performance and then uh, meeting our targets to gain that credit. Really, the main strategies here, material conservation, a life cycle approach, waste management, environmentally friendly materials that are economically efficient and socially appropriate as well as we head into disclosures. So there are four terms here that you really need to know. Life cycle assessment, LCAs, product category rules, environmental product declarations, and health product declarations. Now life cycle assessments, there are two types here. A whole building LCA focuses on the entire building's materials and its entire life cycle. Or you could just do product and material LCAs, which focuses on a specific product's life cycle from beginning to end, and I believe you need to pick uh, 20 specific materials for that. Product category rules. These set specific rules and requirements based on ISO specifications. The ISO is the Internal Organization for Standardization. So ISO specifications for developing the environmental declarations in product areas. And then we have the EPDs. The EPDs, the Environmental Product Declarations, are standardized, internally recognized, and comprehensive tools for providing a product's environmental impact based on ISO-compliant LCAs, and they have to follow PCR requirements as well. Then we have Health Product Declarations, HPDs. These look at impacts on human and environmental health, and it also includes information to evaluate accurate supply chain disclosure and to support informed decisions. It discloses materials and impacts which are used in the final product. As we head into material conservation here, the main theme for LEED, as you'll see in all of these categories, is source reduction. Reduce the source as much as possible first, and then optimize. Optimize building resources to reduce future needs for new ones. Reuse existing buildings, as we've talked about in the location and transportation category, and the ultimate goal is really zero impact. That can be really difficult for projects, it can be impossible for most projects, or for many projects at least, but that's really the goal. So you set the standard high and then do your best. We want to reuse buildings and materials, so instead of selecting a new site and bulldozing new land and green spaces, use lands that have already been developed and use these ex existing abandoned spaces. This removes materials from the waste stream. It lessens the impact and CO2 emissions. Reuse historic buildings, refurbish blighted buildings, and reuse 25 to 75 percent of off-site salvaged materials. Perform a whole building LCA. Now new buildings can perform an LCA to show 10 percent reduction uh, at the minimum, compared with another building after three to six performed measures. Now this is a really great idea. It goes along with benchmarking, uh, compare your set to another building set, and after three to six performed measures, one of which is global warming potential, if it turns out you're doing better, uh, you're on the right track. Use environmentally preferable materials. This is the second step after the primary reduction. 
and demanding new buildings. Make sure there's reduced effects on occupant health and environmental safety. Make sure to include all steps of the life cycle and encourage the project teams to explore more options with sustainable characteristics. Reduce energy from transporting materials. This is locally sourced goods. If it's more local, it obviously has less transportation emissions. Use sustainably grown and harvested products made with thoughtful practices. Use products with intended end-of-life uses that don't include a landfill, so options that divert waste from landfills, companies that will reclaim materials or reuse materials, recycle them if you can. Use recycled content, products with post-industrial or post-consumer content. Use bio-based material. These have less impact than synthetic materials and petroleum products. Use products with known ingredients. This goes along with disclosure, with a disclosed ingredient list to make informed decisions. Use long-lasting and durable goods, so the longer a product lasts, the less money and materials will be needed to replace it. Use socially responsible factories, factories that support human health and workers' rights and fair wages. Now, EPDs, HPDs, and LCAs, these all come into play here to help us make informed decisions. As we head into the disclosure credits here, we want to have building product disclosure and optimization for EPDs, for raw materials, and for material ingredients. So again, the first step is to disclose, the second is to optimize. Use products with EPDs. Encourage the use of products and materials where life cycle information is known and available. Select 20 building products from 5 manufacturers to meet one of those three criteria. Product specific declarations. These have a publicly available life cycle analysis with a cradle to gate at least. It doesn't have to be uh, cradle to cradle, but cradle to gate at least. EPDs must conform to the ISO standard, they must have at least cradle to grave are, and are valued at one half to whole product. Generic products have no specific manufacturer and are counted as half a product, but product specific EPDs, they do have a specific manufacturer and they do count as a whole product. And these all must meet US GBC approved programs. Now optimization can be for third party certified projects that meet reductions in global warming potential, ozone depleting potential, acidification of water, eutrophication, tropospheric ozone, or depletion of non-renewable energy. We want to use a verified source of raw materials that are sourced responsibly. Use 20 permanently installed products from five manufacturers that do have disclosed impacts. Now, if it's self-declared, it counts as half a point, but if it's declared by a third party, that counts as a full point, such as a corporate sustainability report. Uh, the Global Reporting Initiative, the UN Global uh, Compact Communication of Progress, OECD, ISO, these are third parties. We want to optimize extraction or reduce extraction certified by, let's say, the Forest Stewardship Council or the Sustainable Agriculture Network uh, for wood products, for example. And consider material ingredients. The inventory and disclosure of chemicals and products is something you want to have. You want to minimize the use and exposure of chemicals. And one of the following must be used uh, to inventory this. The manufacturer's inventory, health product declarations, cradle to cradle certified, or any U.S. Uh, Green Building Council program. Document material ingredient optimization use. This could be from Green Screen V1.2. That's something different from what this YouTube channel is. Um, benchmark, cradle to cradle certification, uh, any third party for material ingredients. The location valuation factor. So materials are extracted, manufactured, and purchased within 100 miles of the building at 200% of the contributing cost. So that's something you want to have as well. Make sure they're locally sourced. Implement a sustainable purchasing policy. Identify local sources of environmentally friendly materials. Use renewable, local, and salvaged materials. Specify green cleaning products as well. Let's move on to waste management, the final one. Aim for zero net waste. That's really what a project is going to want to do, is zero impact to zero waste. It's going to be difficult, but it's not impossible. It can be done. Divert 100% of waste from a landfill as the final goal. Reduce the building footprint, as we've talked about in sustainable sites. It has less resources, less impact, less energy, less everything if you can reduce that building footprint and build up instead of out. Implement recycling plans. Have a recyclable storage plan for any materials that apply, including batteries and electronics. Conduct waste stream audits, create a baseline for waste diversion, and sample all waste leaving the building, see where it ends up, and see how that can be improved. Have a construction and solid waste plan. Construction and demolition debris 
can be reused a lot of the time, and it accounts for 40% of the waste stream, so that could be reduced and used in other buildings. Of course, monitor and track your recycling and waste stream. Measure and verify results to ensure the efficiency and compost food waste as well, using for fertilizer or bio-waste energy. Really, this category along with other lead categories, we want to reduce, optimize, and end with metering our progress. And this can all be done. It's very important for lead because this is how lead operates. It's really the skeleton of lead, uh, which you'll find in all these categories. So keep going through those checklists, make sure you have that in your head, know those standards and all these terms such as EPDs, HPDs, LCAs. Uh, this can be a pretty complicated and confusing category, but it is so worth knowing for the exam. Uh, as always, thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.